Had your kids, had your wife. Because there is this. Killing anybody out here. The explosive chemical rounds overclock is worth the time to seek out in Deep Rock Galactic. Whether through dives or events, I would start grinding just for this overclock alone. Look, I've had high kill games, but something about this build is, I mean, I would say broken. I'm choosing elite deep dive screenshots so that you know people were there from the beginning to the end. This build is almost too good. I mean, I'm getting just ridiculous kills here with this thing. So I thought I would share it. And of course, for the people that are going to say, you're just playing with inexperienced players. Look, if there's a lot of enemies, that doesn't mean I can kill a lot of enemies. Usually when you're playing with people that are low level, it's a lot harder because there's a lot more work to do. There's a lot more enemies and it becomes very easy to die when you're kind of faced with way more enemies than you're used to because other people maybe don't have the same overclocks or experience. So the mere fact that a build can handle that volume is the whole point here. So for those people who don't have a lot of experience, they could use this build. I've also seen a lot of comments around this overclock. I don't know what builds they're using. I'm just gonna go through what works for me and what I'm using. And to be clear, this weapon is good with all three secondaries, different overclocks, and even different variations of the build I'm showing in this video. It's just a great weapon. Personally, I just get bored of using the same secondary over time, so I switch it up on the regular. So although I'm using the breach cutter in today's video, I also have loadouts with the shard diffractor and the grenade launcher. So I'm just sharing the exact build I use to get these numbers that I showed at the beginning. So to get some basic things out of the way here, when I'm running around with this, I typically hold the trigger button scanning everything in case there are cave leeches or enemies I can't see yet. Most of the reasons why I think I'm getting a lot of kills with this is because it's scanning enemies that nobody can even see yet. And for most builds, you have to have some patience and build up some lock-ons before you release the trigger. You build up the desired lock-ons and release. But when you lock onto an enemy, your rounds are not always going to go to the critical point of an enemy, unless you have an overclock for that. But most of the time, you have to be careful not to waste bullets firing at things that are blocked. A great example of that is an oppressor or dreadnought. So what you do in those situations is move to a point where the middle plus sign here is where you want to fire, and make sure that there's nothing in between you and the target. Then your bullets will hit the target. According to the description of this by the developers, the orange glowing line can be manipulated by continuing to hold down the lock button and changing the player's perspective. This allows targeting specific areas on enemies. Most of the time though, you don't have to micromanage this aiming technique. The Loki rifle truly is a smart weapon, allowing you to just hold a button and release. But I had to cover that as it can be a huge setback if you're trying to kill an oppressor head on. Damn, I'm out. It's also easy to run out of ammo with this weapon. So if you're taking shots that are just hitting armor or if the shots are blocked by terrain, then it's gonna seem like you have even less ammo than you do. Another thing to note about ammo is that once the enemy is dead, any other access locks will not shoot rounds. So if something only needs three bullets, but you have 10 lock-ons, it won't actually use all 10 rounds. It'll just use the first three until it's dead, and then it won't shoot anymore. So you're not actually wasting as much ammo as it seems it does. So for example, if there's a swarmer and you lock onto it for 10 lock-ons, the Loki will not expend any more rounds after that swarmer is dead. So even though you will be low on ammo, it's not because you're overshooting enemies. It might be more to do with the fact that you're just killing everything because the Loki is really efficient at that. The other thing to cover is tap firing. This is something you just need to embrace in order to be adaptive. Often you can't lock onto certain things due to distance or something like a loot bug or jelly sack. Jelly sack. Or you just don't have the time to lock onto an enemy. So you just tap fire to quickly get the job done. It's not very accurate and people say it's not even worth doing, but that's likely because of the accuracy. It's not something I would do often, but there will be obvious situations in which it's needed. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at the build. So the overclock states that the last shot triggers an explosion in enemies with more than three locks. So 
So for me right away, I didn't want to have this Smart Bullets mod, which is a mod I usually love to have, because it prevents putting on more locks than necessary. But in this case, I want to be able to trigger an explosion whenever I need. And to do that, I need to be able to stack lock-ons when needed. Because essentially, when I'm locking onto things, I'm just looking for the number three. When it says three, I know I have an explosion uh, ready to go. And sometimes that explosion is all it need, all you, you really. That you um you had you 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 could you do. We'll try that again. Sometimes the explosion is all I usually need. So essentially, I'm just triggering explosions as quickly as I can. I'm not necessarily doing full lock-ons. I noticed that the explosion itself usually just kills all the enemies around it or the enemy itself. Instead, I found it much more effective to use the Electrochemical Rounds mod, making your rounds do extra damage in contact with electricity or high temperatures. And if you combine that with the Tier 5 Electric Generator mod, which turns rounds electrical when the lock-on threshold is passed, then these two points just work together. And it's because of this that I find doing burst fires a lot more effective. Because most of the time, almost everything dies the first time without even going to full lock-on. And if anything is left over, it's usually electrified, so it doesn't take much to kill the rest of the enemies. And I'm sure people will say, why not this mod, why not that mod? I do feel like the numbers kind of prove it on its own, I don't even really need to uh, go into anything in too depth here. Again, there's lots of different ways you can, of course, use the weapon. I'm just showing you what works for me. Now, a side note about that tier 5 mod, it says on the Deep Rock Galactic wiki that the threshold that they're referring to is anything past 3 lock-ons. I've tested this and it works like 8 out of 10 times, sometimes it doesn't, I'm not sure why, but 8 out of 10 isn't that bad, so at least most of the time it does work. So essentially I'm just triggering explosions and also electricity damage so that if I need to lock onto enemies again, the second time I lock onto the enemy, all the rounds are going to do more damage because they're electrified. Again, I usually don't even have to do it that way because most things die from the explosion or however many locks I have, but triggering small explosions and electrocuting enemies is a solid way to use this build and do damage to bigger, tougher enemies. So that was the Electrochemical Rounds mod, and I did kind of go over the Tier 5 mod as well because they work uh, in unison. So now we have the Tier 2 mod, Lock On Degree. This is the one I think I'm going to have the most uh, disagreements with, <laughs> for sure. My reasoning for this is always comes back to my survival training. It's like one of the first videos I made on my channel, and it's why I use anything. I survived longer with it. I killed more with it, and I learned what points were best for me based on failing, <laughs> dying, basically. Most of the time, I have a breach cutter for anything that's up close. And if not, I'm usually already locking onto enemies before they get that close. So I usually don't need to do this. But when I was dying in my survival training, it was because I was trying to evade and I was losing lock-ons. So basically the lock-on threshold is increased because of this point, which means you're not going to lose locks as easily. And this is important because of the time it takes to lock onto enemies, should you be surrounded by enemies and you're trying to evade. It doesn't happen all the time, if you're good with this weapon, you can pretty much lock onto everything before it gets to you, or have a secondary weapon to deal with close-up enemies. But eventually you will get in that situation where you just have to jump around and evade, and I find with this mod, I can evade while locking onto enemies. As with the other ones, I would lose the lock on. Sometimes I can be almost completely turned around and it'll still maintain the lock on. Because of this, I've even developed a little bit of a technique, I guess, as far as moving the crosshair around the screen to capture lock-ons that are outside of the crosshair, because it will keep that lock-on even though it's not in the crosshair anymore. So if there's enemies spread out, you can move your crosshair around and tag as many as you want, because once they're locked, you're a lot more likely to maintain that lock even while evading. So this is a mod that's just not negotiable for me because if there's enemies really far away, I have other ways of dealing with it or teammates that can deal with it as well. And the first mod is not really a concern because I'm really depending on the explosion and the electricity more than I am hitting weak points or anything like that. So that's it on tier two. And just remember, you can always cancel your lock-ons by changing your weapons and then going back and uh, trying again. 
the lock amount makes sense because it just increases the amount of lock-ons you can actually place. Uh, you know, increasing the chances that you're going to have more than three on more than one enemy kind of thing. Not going to spend too much time on that little detail, doesn't make a massive difference. So to recap, you're basically not letting go of the trigger until you see the number three or higher. I would trigger the explosion first, get the electricity, and then lock on again your second time. There are going to be times where you want to go to full lock on just based on how many enemies there are. But most of the time you're just going to be doing shorter bursts that are a lot quicker to you know execute because the explosions are really going to do the majority of the damage along with the electricity combo that you have going on there we'll actually come back to this later i'm just going to quickly cover the secondary not as much in depth uh, but again i just want to show you guys what i'm using and how i use it i use what i call a breach cutter spam build you can also use lightweight cases if you have that it's called spam build because you have a lot of ammo and magazine size so you don't have to really worry about that you just kind of spam it in any direction that you uh need to and just like the loki it's good at everything you can pretty much use it on anything in any situation and i'm not even going to go through the weapon uh, at all you see what the build is you can use it if you wish um, but the reason why I want to bring it up is because how I use this build is when there is a like a massive wave of enemies, I use the breach cutter for that because of the blow through rounds kind of thing that it has going on. Like one breach cutter round will just travel through so many enemies, right? So I just spam these at whatever direction I need and it takes care of the problem. Nothing too complicated here. Just look for the right opportunities. When you see a group of enemies, try to maybe kite them in a line so that when you shoot the breach cutter, it's going through all of them. Of course, you know, like I said, you can spam it on a Praetorian or a Dreadnought or anything as well. And even if you run out of ammo, you're your primary your loki can still take care of a group so it's really nice having both weapons being so versatile because you never know what kind of swarms you're going to get or what kind of rooms you're going to be in in deep rock galactic before we continue i just have to say you are tripping right now if you haven't enjoyed this video so far show me some love and i'll show you my Jelly and another thing the breach cutter is good for having is for enemies that are up close because you don't have to wait for a lock on or anything like that if if you're suddenly surrounded you just shoot the breach cutter and it'll immediately open up and kill those enemies so i do think that's a pretty good pairing here i also have a full damage shard defractor build for this as well but i don't get near as many kills but yeah the main thing that this weapon is good for like the moments the opportunities you're looking for are enemies in a straight line that's when you don't really want to waste your loki bullets on something like that when it's so much easier to just shoot your breach cutter and it takes care of everything in that direction I also use Born Ready, which is really nice for this because as soon as your mag is empty on your Breach Cutter, you have your Loki to switch to that can keep you alive in every situation. It's one of the reasons why I like this pairing so well. I run out of ammo on my Breach Cutter, I switch to my Loki and it reloads while I'm fighting things. I then use the shredder grenades. I usually throw them when I'm in trouble. That's about it. Um, yeah, uh, they, I don't really have, like I said in my grenade video, don't have a lot of advice on those because they just work so well. Like even against a dreadnought, it doesn't matter. If you throw those things down, they're going to help you. So I kind of save them for when I'm in trouble or maybe if I'm gonna go get ammo in a, in a bad situation, or maybe it buys you time to get a revive. But either way, you can't go wrong with the shredder grenade. And lastly, I want to talk about the turrets as well, because they do have a big part to play, obviously, in getting kills in Deep Rock Galactic. So for the turrets, I use the double turrets with max ammo and magazine size. Firstly, the more ammo you have, the more kills you're going to have. I mean, that's pretty simple. I'm also always running out of ammo for my turrets, even with this mod. And for me, it's really just about the alternative. I don't really need a quick build turret for this actual build. Um, building them quickly is nice, but if you instead just make a habit of building them early, it's really not a problem. Like for me, it's it's just a habit. I enter a room, I'm building a turret. It's like one of the first things I do. And then on top of that, teammates often help build turrets. So if you place both, instead of placing one and building it and then another, if you just place both, most of the time teammates will run over and help you build it and it'll be built really quickly. Um, so I definitely want the extra ammo there, those extra 90 rounds are gonna go far uh you know that could be 90 swarmers who knows Jelly 
sec. And the reason why I choose an expanded magazine size is because I don't want to be refilling my turrets as often. So if you have a bigger magazine size, you won't have to fill it up as often as a smaller one. Basically, I want to focus on all my Loki kills and Breach Cutter kills and stuff like that. I don't want to be constantly, uh, you know, tending to my turrets. Um, and that's the, the other part is tend to your turrets. You do want to be on top of that. You don't want them just sitting there with, with uh, when you have a pocket full of ammo. So you want to keep on that. If you want to have a high kill game, that's definitely something you want to do. And then lastly, I choose the um, uh, Hawkeye system because that's another thing you don't have to like micromanage. I love the defender system. It has a lot of really good uses. If you want to focus uh, on defending a certain thing and, you know, have the ammo focused on that thing, uh, like a drill dozer missions, for example. But uh, for this build, you just want to kind of set it and forget it. Uh, and that's kind of what I call this turret kind of mindset. It's a set and forget build where you just keep feeding it ammo and it'll do its thing. And then you can just focus on, you know, organic kills with the breach cutter and the Loki. So let's do like a little gameplay recap here. So you enter a room, you're gonna set up your turrets, okay? You're gonna run around holding the trigger on the Loki in case it spots something that you don't spot, whether it's a cave leech or a group of slashers or a spitter or something like that. And then when you see the number three, you're going to trigger an explosion. It's your choice at that point to determine how many lock-ons you want, you know, depending on how many enemies there are, how much damage you want to do. But I'm telling you most of the time, the explosion does a significant amount of damage that you don't always want to go to full lock-on, like I mentioned. Then check on your turrets. You always want to be checking on your turrets, you know, um, and if they are not reloaded, what I usually do is just hold square X or who knows what on PC and you'll automatically retrieve your turrets and refill your turrets. Yes, you have to rebuild them, but at least you don't have to reload uh, them as well. So usually when I move around through the cave, I'm kind of resetting them up here and there because uh, I'm also reloading them at the same time. So at this point, you're running around with the Loki, you're keeping your turrets built and full of ammo as you're moving through the caves, and now you're just identifying the right moments to use the Breach Cutter. I mean, there's obvious moments like enemies up close or peeling the armor off of a Praetorian, but essentially I'm not really taking out my Breach Cutter until I see a group of enemies trailing towards me. That is perfect, especially when they're already in a line and you don't have to line kite them yourself. That's when I spam the Breach Cutter, I get a ton of kills, it saves a lot of ammo from my Loki, and I just switch back and forth between the Loki and Breach Cutter from here on out. And as I mentioned, you can spam the Breach Cutter, run out of ammo, switch to your Loki, and use that while Born Ready is reloading your Breach Cutter. And with the odd Shredder Grenade when you need it, you're basically fully equipped to kill literally everything in these caves. There's not really anything else I do in these missions. It's just platforming minerals, building turrets, scanning things, and spamming my breach cutter in the right moments. I think this is one of the best builds I've ever seen in Deep Rock Galactic. It's a lot of fun to use, and I hope you enjoy using it too. By the way, the best part of my channel is reading nonsense comments, like gibberish nonsense stuff. Please keep that going. It's great. It makes me laugh. I love it. Thank you so much, and until next time. Thank you.